Josh was a student of mine in my half not, a dozen not classes. Not that long ago. Yeah. Um, so I just want this, you know, you've had a lot of direct tips and how to break in, and I want this to be more about just hearing one individual personal story, one route in. So hopefully you can grab some, you know, little gems of knowledge from that. So let's just start right away with sure. how did you get started with writing? So not even necessarily screenwriting, just your, your just, beginning. Uh, in general. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember kind of writing a lot as a kid, just short stories and um, probably some, some science fiction and cartoons and stuff like that. Um, yeah, for, for a while. And then I think probably around like high school um, was when I think I, I realized that you could, you know, because I love movies growing up and mm -hmm. um, that I realized that you could, you know, people actually write movies, there's people that, you know, write those things. Um, so, so yeah, so a, a, a teacher in high school, I think, kind of turned me on to that idea, and I kind of just, just ran with it. Okay. Yeah. So was your first screenplay in high school then? Is that when you started? Um, yeah, I mean, probably like late, later on in high school, just sort of making videos in, in class and just with friends and stuff like that. Um, it was definitely... You know, it took a while, I think, as with, with everyone, I think, to kind of learn the form because writing, screenwriting is such a different, you know, format than writing a, mm -hmm. a, a short story or um, a, uh, you know, a, a poem or stuff like that, which they teach in high school, but mm -hmm. they don't, they don't teach you know, screenwriting. So, so how did you first learn about screenwriting if they weren't teaching it? Was it books or was it not until you got to college? Or? Yeah, it was. Um, it was it, a lot of books, definitely. Um, and I think just, I mean, it's so easy now, especially to go online and, and download copies of, mm -hmm. of, of scripts. And uh, I think like the first thing, like I, I downloaded some, I was a big fan of The Office, like mm -hmm. the, the NBC show. And I downloaded some scripts uh, from that and kind of followed along as I like, watched, watched the show. And, and yeah, I think that's really the best thing you can do to learn the format is just by reading, yeah, just mm -hmm. reading scripts. Do you still read a lot of scripts every week? I, I do. Um, I mean, now it's... Probably have less time now. Especially, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, now it's, it's, it's some, some on for, like, you know, for pleasure, like, um, like the Blacklist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I read uh, a lot of scripts that come off of that and scripts that people are talking about and or friend scripts, you know, for, for notes and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of the scripts I read now are for, like... To look at, to possibly you know, like like rewrite or do work Assignment. on, yeah. Okay, let's. Um, well, we'll get to rewrites and all of that good stuff. But let's start with so the early scripts that you first started to think, oh, I have something here. Maybe I'll start to show this to someone. Can you talk about those scripts? Where those ideas came from? When you felt like you got to a point that you were ready to share them with the world? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think starting out, um, especially once I got to DePaul. Um, and, and really kind of started writing a lot more for classes and stuff like that. Um, I, I immediately started writing things that, you know, reminiscent of like the movies I loved growing up. Mm -hmm. um, so like movies about, you know, like monsters living under, you know, your bed and stuff like that stuff for, which I, I think one. you've read, yeah. <laughs> you've read a handful of those. Um, things that are geared sort of towards, you know, families and kids and, and stuff like that because those were the movies you know, I loved uh, mm -hmm. growing up. So um, I think I think initially, especially being in like film school and being with this group of people that are all doing the same thing, it helps to you know give those people you know your scripts and stuff for for notes and feel comfortable sharing it. And um, it wasn't until I think I probably moved to LA that I started kind of casting a, a wider net and showing mm -hmm. things to people that might might be interested. Okay. I'm sure everyone wants to ask this question then. So what was the the first like the script that you used to go out and actually get an agent? Everyone wants to know how do you get an agent? How did that process happen? So when how did you choose like which script you thought okay I'm gonna go out and do this and then the follow-up would be like how did you actually do it? Was it query letters, people you knew? How did you go about getting representation? Yeah um, so I the, the first thing I started writing when I, I moved out to LA was um, was was Road to Oz, which is which was a uh, which you sold, which uh, ended up yeah that's how the story ends. Uh, <laughs> well, hopefully not ends, but um, we'll the see. The middle, yeah. yeah. Um, 
second act begins. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, which which was the story of of L. Frank Baum, who wrote The Wizard of Oz, and uh, I I wrote that just because I mean I love the, everyone loves you know mm -hmm. The Wizard of Oz, and um, I had read some very kind of interesting stuff about about him and his life, so. So I, I wrote that, um, did some research, wrote that probably over a period of about six months or so. And, and that was the script that I, I, I usually send things to like a handful of like probably three or four friends, um, close friends, most of whom you probably know. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Chris, Paul. Uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and once they all were like, because usually you'll give some something to someone and they'll come back with a lot a lot of notes and, mm -hmm. and stuff but once once i had something that they were all sort of collectively like like gave me like a thumbs up like yes this is this is good then i started um trying to do do more with it and mm -hmm. that's how I, so yeah all i did was not all i did but so you start with your friends yeah you friends, wait until they get like a green light right and then you feel that on. So then the next step would be the, to... The, right, so to find someone else who can actually do something with it, mm -hmm. potentially. So so I did some research on uh, just IMDb Pro. It's a, it's a good resource. Good investment. Yeah. Um, I think it's like 12, 12 bucks a month, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I, I sought out representative, representative agents that I uh, that represented clients who whose work I loved and whose work was sort of similar to my own mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, so I found someone, an agent uh, at a small agency at the time, Resolution. Um, I sent him a, a simple, uh, basic query email just, you know, saying, I'm, I'm so-and-so, um, I'm writing to you because, you know, because such and such, like, because you represent this person. Um, and I just told him briefly about the story, and uh, and that's kind of how how it happened. I mean, he mm -hmm. then passed. You know, cause agents aren't technically allowed to read unsolicited uh, scripts, so he mm -hmm. s passed it down to the head of the story department at the agency. I I worked with them for a little bit, uh, and then I submitted the script to the Nichols uh, Fellowship, which is a great opportunity for writers. Um, and uh, and yeah, and then they brought me in to the to the agency a few months later, and yeah. And now we're at the midpoint. And now and now we're at we're at the midpoint. Yeah. yeah. So you did cold query letters, which I think is a really it's inspiring to me to know that you can just get out there and say this is who I am, this is what I have. What was the response rate? Like, was that did you how many did you send out? How many people did you hear from? Want to read? Um, it was a very it was a very like narrow group uh, of, of people because I, th I think a lot of a lot of agents and, and managers and stuff get emails from writers, you know, saying, "Hey, can you read my can you read my script?" Mm -hmm. But they don't really give, you know, like why why is this person contacting me? You know, out of out of everyone. So um, so I didn't really I didn't really get that many you know responses, or I, I would get responses that would say, "I'm sorry, you know, you know, we can't." We can't, can't read it. Read it. Um, mm -hmm. Good luck. Um, but yeah, there were there were a handful of people who were very uh, polite and, and kind and would and would respond. But for and you were like between a few people, right? I don't know if I'm sharing well, that, the scenes info, but no. you had a couple of people interested. Like, how did you choose who you wanted to work with? I mean, that all happened. You're talking as far as agents go, or I remember you were emailing me like there was multiple people interested and you weren't quite sure. Right. Like, well. Yeah. So that that was I think we had the conversation about like producers and, mm -hmm. and stuff like yes, that. Yeah. So so yeah so I we had um, once my the agency was involved and stuff like that and I, I actually had a producer of my own that I had also brought on from a query another query letter. Mm -hmm. um, we were kind of deciding what to do with the project whether to take it to kind of you know smaller companies or you know bigger you know, bigger names. Uh, we had a whole list of people that we were debating taking it to. Um, but then um, th it ended up getting picked up by um, a producer who read the script because of the Nichols Fellowship. He was one of the judges for the, Nich the Nichols mm -hmm. Fellowship. And so he picked it up before we were really able to 
to do that. And it ended up working out for the best. So it's that new line now. And, yeah. yeah, let's backtrack okay. for a second because that is probably a day everybody wants to hear about. So tell us a little bit about you know, the moment where it's like, okay, we're going to you know, start to send those people. And then the day that people are potentially buying it, like are you sitting by your phone? How, when did you first hear that it sold? Kind of just behind the yeah. peak at that point. Um, I wish it was a more exciting <laughs> story. Um, Crazy bidding but, war and no, phone well, ringing. That, I mean, that was the intention. That was, mm -hmm. that was the plan. But um, I, I knew that my, my, my agents were like doing something kind of behind, behind closed doors a little bit. I didn't really know what, what was happening. Um, but uh, we, were, we were literally ready to go out with the script like the next day or the next like Monday or something. And I, um, I think I was. Can at, you like explain just briefly what going out sure. was, just in case anyone? Yeah, I mean know. that's basically just they, you know, your um, the agency will will make a list of um, companies that they think will be right for the the particular project. Um, so they'll either send it, they'll either, so they'll they'll blast it out kind of in a way. Um, usually like a, you have like a day. It was like Monday we're sending it. To sometimes, yeah, yeah. I mean, right. I mean now I think you know stuff is kind of can float around for a while before mm -hmm. any, you know, anything happens or doesn't happen with it. But, um, but yeah, so we had a, a bunch of people on the list and studios and then producers who could bring some, could bring it into a studio. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what going out is. It's kind of like a big blast, like an email right. blast kind of more or less. Um, it used to be like messengers and envelopes. Right, exactly. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, when, so I was at I was at a um, I was at a bar I was at a bar with like a, a few friends. Um, you can say that you're like just, just being hesitant. A, like um, you could be at a bar. I was I was <laughs> I, I was of age, so this was just fine. Uh, um, but yeah, it was it was just after uh, I worked. I still do at an elementary school, and we just we went to grab a couple of drinks after work, and um, and it was on like sunset, so it was like a, a very busy street mm -hmm. and like I couldn't I got a call so I stepped away from the table and there were three it was two agents and my, my manager on the other line of the phone and then me and I couldn't really I couldn't really hear what was what they were saying like I heard the words uh, uh, Bo Flynn which is the name of the producer new line offer and I heard some numbers mm -hmm. yeah um, and but I was like holding my. Did you say yes right away? I was no you? no. Well, it was like it was kind of like, yeah. I mean, it, it was kind of a no. It was kind of a no brainer, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but they, yeah. I had one one hand on my ear, like I couldn't. And they were like, "You don't really seem, <laughs> you don't really seem that excited about it." I'm like, "No, I. Well, let's talk tomorrow." So we, I, I talked. Like, were you trying to play hardball, or you just couldn't hear that? No, I just couldn't. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Okay. It, it was a tough. But I, I went back to the table after the call, and like got my friends drinks because I knew something good had happened. Mm -hmm. I just, <laughs> I just <laughs> couldn't quite hear what. Right. But exactly. You heard um, yeah. So, so yeah. So then uh, the next day, I, I called them back. And I can't believe you waited a day to call them back. Well, because it was like, like this was like <laughs> eight. This was like eight o'clock at night, and. Um, you have much more patience than me. Yeah, I'd be in my car trying to get them all on the line. So, um, yeah, in, in, in retrospect, I guess I was just so—I don't know—it's a lot to, mm -hmm. to to take in. And you're good at playing it cool, though. You got that. Everyone here can probably hear my heartbeat on the, the live stream. You're much more. Thanks. Um, okay, so you have that process. Let's back up a little bit because I do want to talk about contests and fellowships because I know a lot of people ask about whether they're worth it and should you do them. And you've had a lot of success, obviously, with your the Nickel Fellowship. Can you talk a little bit about which contests you applied to and if, um, like, which ones you found to be the most, get you the most help and get people? Sure, yeah. Um, I think people often talk about the two that are sort of the most reputable are the Nichols Fellowship, which is a, it's a fellowship that's kind of um, offered by the Academy. Um, and it's, I mean, writers have, have gone on to do you know, great, great things. And um, they narrow it down to like 10 finalists and then like five fellows or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so Nichols is great. Um, the Austin Film Festival, their, their screen 
their screenwriting competition is also very, very good. And then, um, yeah, I mean, then there's the Blacklist service, which isn't really a, a, a festival, but it's like a service online where you can upload mm -hmm. your script and people will read it and, and give like a rating to it and, and people in the industry can download your scripts and yeah, that's a relatively new thing. So you don't know about it at the blacklist. You can go for a fee, put your script up there, and then there's you have to be registered to be a reader, right? And they'll read it and rank. They'll it read it. Yeah, all the readers are like they're like legitimate mm -hmm. people. They work at you know like agencies and production companies usually and stuff. Um, and then yeah, I and mean, there's they've had a few success stories. Um, and the blacklist itself is such a reputable thing. Um, are you putting stuff on there now, or were no, you? No, no. Oh, now I'm, you probably can't with your agent. Or? Well, yeah, it's just it's it's because um, they don't want people. Right. Seeing was things. the Oz script on there though? It was up. It was on there for. Um, it's, it's also very a very subjective <laughs> service. Did uh, not get a good. Reading. Well, it was on. It was on there for like I think a week, and um, it's like it's, people rate it. I think one to ten, mm -hmm. and my, uh, my reader gave me like a four, <gasps> something like oh, that. No. Yeah. Um, which, Did you email them after and tell them that you sold it? No, I didn't. <laughs> um, but I mean, they'll see the movie when it gets made. Oh, yeah. even better. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, I mean, it, it, it's very it's, it's subjective. But I mean, everything they pointed out because they give like comments and reviews and stuff, and everything they pointed out about the script was, was accurate. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's a, I, I recommend you know that that service. I know you can't talk about all the super inner workings because there's stuff that we can't know about. Can you tell us a little bit about where that script is in the process? Sure, yeah. So when we can see it. Uh, well, that I, that I don't <laughs> know. But um, so yeah, so I it, the script sold back like mid-September. Um, and there was probably four, uh, four or five months uh, of like, you know, a lot of rewrites and stuff like that, um, which, you know, that process was very new to me, you know, going in and getting notes from the studio and then working with your producers to address those notes mm -hmm. um, in the right way. Um, and then, yeah, so about five months of rewrites and then we, we got them a draft that they were happy with. So um, they're, you know, they're, we're going, going after some, you know, cast and then directors and stuff, so. Okay. Yeah. So you're, it's out to people now, and you're it, you know, yeah. So, so just, next it, year you can come tell us. It's a lot, yeah. And you're hope, in production. Well, hopefully, yes. you you never know with these things, but um, it's uh, you know you hope for the best, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. They 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 say they're excited about it, so. Well, I, they probably are if they bought it. Yeah, I mean, I guess <laughs> that that's true. Yeah. Let's hear a little bit about your life after that, then, because obviously you go from spending all your time writing, and then what happens after you sell it, and how your um, life changes. Well, yeah, so Work-wise. it's so I, I was very much a, after the sale, the conversation immediately went to the rewrites and, and, and stuff. Um, but then I think I, I've learned to be very focused on sort of, you know, the next thing, obviously, mm -hmm. what's what's next, because um, you don't want to fizzle out uh, quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's a lot of. So w once that happened, once the sale happened, and this is true in, in anyone's case, really, like your your reps will send that script around to people just as a sample, like mm -hmm. to for you, like this is what this person does, and then you'll go in to meet with them just for a general meeting, and uh, that takes up a lot of a lot of time. You know, I saw you when you came to Chicago. You were tired. Cause you're like you're doing couple of these every day and yeah can you explain to people like what a general is if they don't know and like what you do to general and then the other kinds of meetings you're taking because you're also taking meetings to pitch a take about like specific rewrite. projects yeah. yeah can you talk about yeah. the difference sure between? yeah so general meetings I mean they're usually just they have your agent or manager sent them your script and uh, they work at such and such their such and such studio or production company and they do you know these types of movies so You'll just go in, meet with them, um, and you know you'll tell them about yourself and your your story and what you like to do and what you like to write. They'll tell you about uh, what they do as a company, and then it's just it's someone you know to be p potentially work for or work with you know down the line. Um, and it's been fun. Like that's uh, I've met a lot of great people and you find that people are really just kind of 
it is it is tiring, but but talking about you know movies with people mm -hmm. that also like talking about movies is is good. So how much of that do you feel is like almost like a first date too, or just like trying to get to know you and um, personality and whether they want to work with you? Yeah, it's I yeah I'd compare it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's like big dating. It's very yeah, because and it becomes also like a routine kind of it, like you have sort of what you're gonna say kind of already worked out because you've said it so many times. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the other kind of meetings where your 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 reps will say like um, they're doing this project um, go in and they want you to go in and hear about it so I'll do that and then you know they'll say come back if you're interested you know come back in a couple of weeks with a a take on it like mm -hmm. what like what version of this story you know will will you do so yeah I, if you have if you could talk about pitching a take I remember I went to USC for grad school and we got my MFA in writing and I went out and someone gave me a novel, a graphic novel, and they're like, can you come pitch your take on this? And I had never heard the words pitch your take. And I was like, how did I get through school without being taught this? So we make sure here that we have a whole class on this yes. stuff now. But can you explain what pitching your take is? Because you would think in adaptation, everyone's just gonna write the same thing, but it's obviously not. You bring your own voice to it. And yeah. Can you talk about how you prepare to pitch a take and what exactly that means in that kind of meeting? Sure, yeah. I mean, they kind of tell you what type of movie they're they're looking to make like if they're if they want to make like um like you know an angry birds movie or something have you pitched like that? i've not oh. no i was <laughs> trying to find one that i hadn't uh, mm -hmm. that i yeah but um and yeah so they want to make an, an angry birds movie like we want it to be you know kind of like uh, et or something like that um you know can you do can you come up with something in that in that tone or we want like an adult lead character as well and um so then you'll you'll go off and everyone sort of has their own unique style and everyone will see a different kind of side of mm -hmm. of a story or of a of a property like like angry birds and um yeah you just pitch the whole story you, like how much of it do you have to develop ahead of time because i know you're talking about you had to develop so many different projects yeah um it's a lot i mean it's sort of the major kind of you know the major sort of beats of a story, but you also don't want it to sound like you're you're like outlining the story in mm -hmm. front of them. Like it's a lot of it becomes very much a kind of a, a conversation kind of, and you're sort of giving them what the feel of the movie is and mm -hmm. some of the major events. You know, talk about characters and, and stuff like that. That's probably been one of the most challenging like things and sort of the most time kind of sensitive and sort of most intense things to, to learn is sort of going in a room and kind of giving this, this presentation mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. One of the things that right away with your work when I had you as a student, and I think anyone who's read your stuff, you have a very clear and distinct voice. Like you know your voice and you know your style and you know what you want to do. Um, how early like did you always know that was your voice did you ever experiment with dif different genres try to write a horror script for example or anything or did you sort of know oh, and uh, how did you know like that was what you wanted to do um and how would you describe your voice i know it's a very uh question, deep yeah uh your no. voice is deep or uh, the question is deep oh uh, no oh. my voice but uh oh yeah. <laughs> that voice um over my head. <laughs> uh no my yeah i don't i don't know i mean i i like to be kind of i mean you read a lot of scripts and kind of read what doesn't work and, and there's some writers that can get away with writing like huge you know blocks of action description or can get away with like swearing and like the action description or or something but um yeah i don't know i, I guess i kind of like ever written a swear into any of your screenplays yes yeah okay. not like not like one of the higher level ones like probably like a, like a pg oh, like a pg pg, 13 PG i can't 13, see it yeah maybe yeah but, uh, I dare you to swear right now, but I won't. Um, <laughs> okay, no, I'll so your, send you your voice is very family friendly, yeah. and it's that sort of Goonies adventure style. That's yeah, we, yeah and I know we've we've talked mm -hmm. kind of a lot about that because you like those movies yeah. as well. Um, yeah, a fun sort of yeah. You want to give the reader kind of a sense that they're sort of on this mm -hmm. adventure, and um, I've worked. With, I've also like worked with kids for a while, so I, I think that kind of has had an influence on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you, how do you think that other job, like do you recommend having a job outside the industry? Because I know you spend a lot of time at the school and you were a camp counselor too, right? Or yeah, I've, I've done sort of a lot 
for uh, I've done that for a while, sort of you know camp counselor working yeah. at schools and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I mean when I moved to LA, I I got a job working part time at an elementary school because I knew how to do it and I knew that it was like an after school thing, so mm-hmm. the hours were like two to seven or something like that. So I, I knew that the rest of the time I could write mm-hmm. and, and I could be busy working on that and then I could go work and not have to think about it. Um, so yeah, I do recommend definitely having, some, I think, a job that will allow you to be creative um, mm-hmm. on your downtime, I guess. And they're telling me to go to Q&A. So if someone wants to make their way to the microphone, and while you do that, I want to ask one more, which is about your process. So if you have this after school two to seven, then do you write every day? I know there's that like say, saying, like as a writer, you have to write every day. So what is your process? Is it every day? Is it pages every day? Like what is your... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it changes. It used to be like I liked would getting up and sort of writing in, in the morning, but um, with kind of like now having to go around to meetings and stuff that takes away sort of a lot of that time. So you mm-hmm. kind of have to be more more flexible. And I, I do a lot of writing like on the weekends, I think now probably more than more than before. Um, Are you still working at the school? I work there. I work at the school um, two days a week. Yeah. So it's like it's not You're so a, nice. It's not a like lot. That helps too. Like being a nice person. People want to work with nice people. Thank so. you. I, that's very true. I mean, everyone. It's very true that you're very nice. No, it's very true that people <laughs> want to work with nice people. They do. Uh, everyone I've met has just been really, really nice, and you. I, I feel like you don't get to, you don't get to a certain level without being nice because people are ultimately, if you're a jerk, people don't want to work with you. Mm-hmm. So. Great. Let's take it to a question. Um, I know that visuals are really important for a writer to get across to whoever's buying these things. And I also know that they could possibly be like, well, I got a sense that they could possibly be like the make or break kind of thing. My question to you is how much influence should we have over like scenery or things like that? Because um, I know people want some of these scripts to be international and appeal to China. Does that mean that we can't? like write specific places There's, or should we just give a general sense when when writing a script you're saying yeah. yeah um yeah i mean honestly i think i think being as honestly as specific as as possible at least in my experience helps um you know i, I think if you have a certain town in mind or if you know of a certain location i think you know if you can see it you know clear then put it down in the script, as clear as you can see it, um, and uh, I think that'll that'll help paint paint a picture. Yeah. Provide any fl- uh, flexibility for like marketing or any uh, like. I I mean, like I wouldn't really. I don't know. I guess I wouldn't focus on that. I would just they'll you know down the line if if anything happens with it they'll worry about that. But I think just worry about kind of doing telling the story. I think that you want to tell yeah. write yeah. a good story and right they'll, they'll figure out the yeah the other next question hi um i am a screenwriter myself and with these cold queries that you were talking about yeah when you described that you contacted agents who worked with people that had like a similar voice to yours like how did you go about that was it like if you love pixar you'll love this script? <laughs> like um, okay, I'll, I'll give you an, an example, I guess. Um, so IMDb, it, it, IMDb Pro, if you go on and you pay like 12 bucks a month for it, it'll, you know, it'll give you like the names of like agents at the agencies and the clients that they represent. So um, the, the agent I, I went to, uh, a guy by the name of Rich, uh, Rich Green, he represented a writer, uh, Linda Wolverton, who wrote uh, like Maleficent and Alice in Wonderland and, and stuff like that. And I knew those were the types of things that I w- was interested in. So I know I said something along the lines of, um, like, I know you represent Linda. I'm a, you know, I'm a fan of, of her work. Um, kind of, kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank cool. you. Yeah. They're saying that's my last question. So uh, before we wrap up though, is there any 
words of advice you would give for, you know, you've been in the audience at these events and now you're up here, so anything that you would pass along to them? Go to DePaul. Uh, no, uh, Take six classes with that, me. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I learned, you know, I, I took a lot away from obviously my time here. Um, but I would say more broadly, um, yeah, I guess don't be afraid to reach out to people. And um, if you have that script that you think would be good for this you know, person, don't, don't hesitate to just be nice and ask and, and reach out because I wouldn't be you know, none of this would have happened if I hadn't just like asked someone. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. So be nice and be brave. Be nice and be brave. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Cool. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.